For only the second time, Vegas launches a season on the road. Pacific Division rival Los Angeles hosts this opening night collision. The Kings mark the sixth different game one opponent for the VGK. Hollywood, here we come. As we go across the Las Vegas Valley and around the world, the Golden Knights bring us back together on Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, for it's the dawn of the sixth season, the dawn of the Golden Age. As we come to you from inside Sydney National Marina and Studio 31, Darren Millard along with Darren Elliott, the Olympian, VGK Focus to hang out for you over the next uh, half hour and a bit. Uh, so much happening. Uh, tonight's a national broadcast, so we're going to give you the Vegas angle. And we'll be back on AT&T Sportsnet on Thursday from the gold carpet right on through the post game. But we're looking forward to this game against the Los Angeles Kings. We set the table, a new coach, a first-time goaltender uh, starting a season opener. An NHL star makes his debut in Phil Kessel. Uh, the captain's back. What are you looking for? I'm looking for the effect that uh, Bruce Cassie's style has on the defense. I I'm looking for the defense to get back to be the driving force for the offense for this team. Uh, I'm looking for Shea Theodore to be uh, – he was 14th in the NHL in, in points last year. He, he had a, a kind of a quiet march, but overall a good season. He'll be in the top 10 in scoring this year, I believe. And a the guy they just signed, uh, have Nick Haig back in the, in the fold – I think it's going to be a breakthrough season for him for the same reason. Defensemen using their feet to make plays coming out of their own zone. Those two guys are going to benefit the most. You know the word that we're going to hear all season from those microphones down low? Wheel, wheel, wheel. <laughs> Being able to carry that that's puck, right. right? Yeah, that's that's what the goalie yelling it out. What, what yeah. uh, What's your option coming around the net? Is it a pass? Is it a you know, D to D pass? They were a little bit slow. They got a little bit uh, predictable in that regard. Now it's using the best attributes, which is the skating. That's what they're going to get back to for the decor. He's one of the best in the National Hockey League, Olympian, former National Hockey Leaguer, and Darren Elliott is with us uh, this season again, and we're going to lean on you tonight with some questions from the audience. Uh, go to Twitter and send them in. Uh, looking forward to it, and we'll get to those in a little bit uh, on this program. Perhaps you're excited about the new look line as well with Phil Kessel, yep. Jack Eichel, and Riley Smith, the latter of which is standing by in Los Angeles with Ashley Weiss. Riley, we know how exciting this day is for us, and we aren't even the ones on the ice. What is the first day of a brand new season like for a National Hockey League player? You know, even though it's my 12th year in the league, he's still a little bit jittery, um, a little bit of nerves. But like you said, it's exciting. Um, it was too long of a summer for us, and we can't wait to put a good product back on the ice. We know our fans, they were out for every preseason game, but this is the real thing. So uh, we're excited to get back to it and start uh, getting into the swing of things. Now that you've had some time together under Bruce Cassidy's system, what do you hope the identity of this team will be this season? It'll be a hard-nosed team, uh, a team that's tough to play against. Um, you know, I've played a lot of games against Boston in my career, and that's kind of always been uh, their motto and their style of play. Um, it's a style of play that's tough to play when you get to that end of the season and playoff time. So um, if we can build to that structure quickly, I, I think it'll be great for this group. It's a big season for the two guys you spent the preseason playing with. Jack Eichel, it's the first time we're seeing a full healthy season from him as a Vegas Golden Knight, and of course, Phil Kessel. What do those two guys bring to this team? A lot of offense. Um, you know, there's been times in this preseason where I'm looking around, I'm trying to find them, and it seems like they're always open. They're always creating time and space with the puck. So uh, just try to work with them and try to create chemistry quickly. It's your sixth season as a Vegas Golden Knight. You're an original misfit. You've played on many good teams with this organization, but what excites you most about this group? Just the potential. I, I think you look up and down our lineup on paper. We can play with anyone in the league. Um, we bring those intangibles, and uh, it should be you know, a great season for us and hopefully a very long one. You start out with a divisional opponent who exceeded expectations last season, had some key off-season additions. What challenges do the LA Kings present tonight? Uh, they've adapted to the players they have, the system they have. Uh, they've done it a great job. They kind of put a rebuild together in two years, and, and they're very competitive right now. So uh, we have our work cut out for us. Uh, like you said, they have some new key players that add some uh, depth offensively for them. So uh, we played them enough. We know how they play in their structure. We just have to be on top of our game and, and make them kind of adapt to us. Riley, have fun. Enjoy it. Thanks for the time. I appreciate it. Thank you. I love the ringside interviews puck and stick in the background a little rink noise for you ambiance welcome to opening night and here we are talking hockey love to do it
What about that line and the potential? Well, I talked to, to Riley Smith during the you know preseason, and one of the things that I asked him about is like, Jack Eichel, right? Jack Eichel and, and chemistry, and you hear that term all the time. And I said, well, Jack Eichel is not going to change his game for you and Phil Kessel. I said, so is it incumbent upon you guys to kind of learn what his tendencies are and go from there? And he goes, yeah. He goes, I've always been such a puck support winger. Um, and now Jack Eichel can make his own space, create his own time, do those things by holding onto the puck as well as he does. He says, so, so now my game has to change a little bit. I have to get open. I have to find ice and become available and be aware. And that's what he's focused on. And he looked really good alongside Eichel. That line could just explode uh, cool. and grab the fun. attention of the National Hockey League. Uh, don't want to just say the Twitter audience can send us questions. We're opening up to everybody, Twitch, uh, YouTube, uh, across the board. Uh, looking forward to the interaction throughout this night. Uh, one of the most interesting training camps that we've seen of the half dozen uh, with the Vegas Golden Knights, uh, you have that goaltending battle for the number one spot, uh, the new systems uh, keeping us busy, Nick Hag in yeah. the fold. But arguably... The biggest story from start to the end was the status of Mark Stone. And he was there on the opening of camp, and he's going to play tonight. Our Dan Duva on Fox Sports Las Vegas, the flagship radio station, catches up with the captain prior to tonight. You know, you're just excited to get back into the 82-game grind. And, um, you know, I think we got uh, a little bit of an eye-opening experience last year not making the playoffs, and we just want to get back there. I think every team thinks that they have – a great team going into opening night, and uh, now it's all about proving it, and it uh, starts with game one. Uh, preseason for you, perhaps there was a little bit more attention on it given the surgery that you had in the spring. Can you share with us the challenges of coming back from the surgery physically and mentally? Uh, definitely challenges. I mean, I think I compared it to, you know, kind of climbing a mountain. You kind of stop, uh, kind of hit your peak, and then you keep going. Um, you know, but you just got to convince yourself that you're getting better. Uh, the mental grind is tough, but... Um, I feel great now. Uh, I think I've put that um, in my rearview mirror, uh, and now it's just about maintaining the body, which is uh, like anybody in this league. You got to maintain yourself to uh, to produce at this league, and I feel like I'm in a good spot uh, to do that. Uh, Bruce Cassidy said that he saw a significant jump from your first preseason game to the next one. Did you feel that as well? Yeah, pretty tentative that first one. Um, you know, I've never had a surgery before in my life, so. Um, Obviously, a little bit of nerves uh, for a different reason going into that one. But once you kind of take those first few bumps, kind of get into the game, uh, you realize that you're, you're finally healthy, which is a good thing. So um, definitely felt better as the preseason goes on. And uh, now that the games are for real, um, just want to get out. Interesting comment because we hear the word surgery with athletes so much that we just assume that it's second nature to them. But first time they'd had that process. First time he's had the process, but that first game, as he mentioned, he, he was tentative for sure. I remember I was doing the game on radio with Brian McCormick and, and Brian says, what, what have you seen from Mark Stone? I said, his jersey, because that was about all he had showed. And, and he admitted right there, really tentative. He just, he just showed up and the good news is, as you alluded to, he got better and better and more comfortable, more confident as the preseason went along. And now he's ready for the regular season. Have people watching around the world uh, tonight. Uh, Catherine uh, taking in this one on Facebook from Sheffield, UK. Come on. Yeah, it's happening. I've got the notes right here. I'm not making this up. Uh, Ryan I'm... Field is watching on YouTube as well. And we've got so many questions. Thank you. <laughs> Keep them coming. We might have to extend things just a little bit because there's uh, awesome interaction coming in for us. So we've got some exciting treats for you to come later in the program that, uh, that you won't see on any other hockey broadcast. Uh, trust me on this. But I also <laughs> want to give you an idea that single game tickets for all Golden Knights games, home games, are on sale now, including an opening night uh, at the Fortress on October 13th. Uh, uh, which is on Thursday night. Don't miss the action. Take advantage of special deals like a Nevada offer and a medieval meal deal and standing room only opportunities that start at just $25. VegasGoldenKnights.com for more. We'll be back with this dawn of the golden age as we look ahead to game one against the Los Angeles Kings.
Welcome back to the dawn, the golden age. The Vegas Golden Knights uh, launching their sixth season. I want to tell you that the Dollar Loan Center in Henderson has a packed schedule coming up with a little something for everybody. I mean, last week was incredible. Like concert, basketball games, yeah. a couple of hockey games. It was a wild. Uh, this Friday, the Henderson Silver Knights will be kicking off the season, hosting Tucson in the first leg of a back-to-back -back against their division rivals with three more games throughout the month. Every Monday, come and visit the Henderson Farmer's Market on the Tilt Yard, uh, then ending off the month with the G League Ignite game on Sunday, October 30th. Visit thedollarloancenter.com for a full calendar of events. Again, this is a national television broadcast tonight. You can listen to it on the radio. That Mark Stone conversation with Dan Duva, uh, we pared it down a little bit. Uh, you can listen to the entire thing, 98.9 uh, Fox Sports Las Vegas with Dan. Uh, Ryan Wallace doing the pregame show right now over on the radio side, the flagship station of the Vegas Golden Knights uh, excitement starting to build we'll get to the goaltending in just a little bit but what do you think logan thompson's belly's doing right now <laughs> well the, the, everyone has that nervous uh kind of the nervous excitement you know it, it's you're there's anticipation um but it, it's not anxiety you know it, it's more about that nervous energy let's just get to the ice i think that's what logan thompson and the rest of the locker room i think they're all going through it Vegas Golden Knights looking to improve on a 4-1 and record on opening night. The only team in the National Hockey League that has never lost on opening night on the road. 1-0 uh, in that department. For more on the journey, let's start tonight. Let's go outside Crypto.com Arena and join Dave Gosher and Shane Naughty, guys. Darren and my other brother, Darren. Good to see them back working again, Shane. Good to see us back working again. Uh, greetings from Los Angeles. And season six, hard to believe it's six seasons now, but uh, always an era of excitement, but I think maybe even more so for this group this year. There really is. There's a lot of excitement. First of all, the Golden Age, we're coming into that for the Golden Knights. Uh, a long off season, a lot of motivation, not happy with the way it ended last year for Vegas. And then for me, I think the excitement right now, it feels like the first time since the start of the 2019-20 season, we're back to normal. Yeah. We get to go over spend some time in the room, see the players, everything's back to normal. This feels like another, for in a while, we're having a start to regular season. So a lot of excitement. The players just want to get after it here tonight. So I'm excited to see how it goes. You know, lots of intriguing storyline, Shane, when you start a new season. But for the Golden Knights, you look at Phil Kessel, perennial 20-goal scorer in this league, sitting on 399 for his career. And a fresh start for him after, you know, a down year last year in Arizona. Yeah, and a, a season in which uh, he wants to bounce back in his mind. You know, just eight goals last year, still had 44 assists. But uh, I think seeing the chemistry so quickly between him and Jack Eichel it speaks to his hockey IQ. I think Riley Smith, a guy that can really plug in anywhere uh, in the lineup. But they've had a real good fit. They've looked good through practice. They've been able to click, connect in games. And I think it's something that we're going to watch here going forward. As Bruce Cassidy said, you know, he's not married to his lines right now, but he certainly likes what he sees here to start being on. Opportunity always in training camp. Will Carrier was injured early in camp, and that opened the door for somebody here early, and Paul Cotter took advantage of it. He really jumped on, and that's what you want to do. You want to have somebody force your hand in the lineup. And Paul Cotter was really able to do it this season, uh, and he did it by doing what you know, he's done really well as coming. He's been physical, but I think the consistency he had in his game throughout preseason, that's something the coaching staff and management wants to see how he can be. But, uh, and then he brought some offense. So he's on a line with Kulasar. Wow, that line's got to bring energy. And, you know, Paul Cotter heard him speak this morning, but then he said, I can't reinvent how I'm going to play. He's got to go and do what he's done well here through camp. Stick to what he's successful at. And I think he's been a real good addition here. I'm excited to see how it starts. Obviously, Will Carey could pop back in there. But another opportunity for Paul Cotter here as he starts the season with Vegas. I know the two goalie guys back in the studio oh, are going to talk about the goalies ad nauseum. But, you know, Bruce Cassidy did say this morning, they have mapped out what they let the goaltending to look like for the first month of the season. But we know we'll see Paul Thompson. And I think it's Logan Thompson deserved that. I think he earned it through what he was able to do in camp and what he did, you know, last year to end the season. So, you know, Logan Thompson, we've been saying, you're giving those eyes. It's like everybody else. You're giving that opportunity. You want to turn it into many more. And, uh, yeah, it's interesting here. They've mapped out the, the, the first month of the season. I'm sure uh, Darren and Darren could spend about an hour show uh, just talking about that. Uh, but, no, uh, Logan Thompson. Well deserved for him. I'm sure he's excited here to start the season with Vegas and get the first step. And it, you sense a kind of renewed energy around this team. You know, Kelly McCrim's talked a lot between the end of last season and the start of this one that he 
felt they needed, you know, you don't never want a long off season, but refreshed, re-energized. Bruce Cassidy, John Stevens brought in, Sean Burke brought in, and a chance to get off to a fresh start here tonight with some new pieces to the puzzle. Yeah, I think that's it. Re-energized is what this group is. A lot of guys needed time for health, time to train the right way. They played a lot of hockey. You know, Late in the summer, the bubble, it's, it's been, so it's kind of back to normal. And I think that's what players are creatures of habit. So the ability for them to train that long, that hard, and, and have some a bit of bad taste left in their mouth about how it ended last year. They're coming in, they're ready to go. And Bruce Cassie had an interesting point he talked about tonight. He said, I want them to relax, play their game. He says, I don't want us to come out and try and force things too early, right? Let the game settle in. And that's maybe one thing about playing that first game on the road that can be well, Nick Haig, one update, is here. Uh, got yeah. to L.A. here late last night. He feels like he's ready to play. He had a back skate this morning, which didn't look like a lot of fun. No, it's not. Right? He and Will Carrier, uh, who else is in there? Jake Caesar was in the mix as well. So uh, the games have to be easier than that. But good to see number 14 in the fold. It'll be here for three years. Yeah, I think it's great to have him in. And, and I like that they're able, you know, uh, John Stevens, who's a defensive coach, is able to stay in contact, give him clips. He's been able to watch and stay, you know, he's in up to date as you can in that situation, make the most of these skinning with the Ontario Hockey League team. So, uh, Nick Hague, I think, as he said, excited to be back with the guys. That's what it's all about. He's back here with his team, excited to get going. We'll see how long that takes before uh, uh, Cassidy feels he's ready to play. All right, well, that'll do it for us from Los Angeles. Golden Knights beginning season number six here in LA. And of course, uh, the big home opener coming up against the Blackhawks on Thursday night. Guys, uh, do the best you can back there. Uh, thank you. I, I love the fact that they're resourceful, taking their ties off and using them as the security guidelines so nobody can get in and bother them while well, they're doing that hit. I thought they were joining us in the studio. Uh, did some, nobody tell them that the game's on ESPN? What are they doing in L.A.? <laughs> they, they, got, they got the really neat job of being able to watch that in person on yeah. a season opening game. Uh, that's cool. And we'll be able to do the home yep. opener for the first time on Thursday night. Uh, looking forward to that. We're going to be outside in the gold carpet, and then we're going to be inside uh, taking everybody through that process. They touched on the fourth line. Paul Cotter playing in that role tonight. Will Carrier yep. getting healthier. So that could be a change as we go along through the course of the week. But the role of that fourth line, is it consistent from the previous coaching staff to this? Well, I mean, you go way back, and, and they used to always start, uh, when Pete DeBoer first got here, he started the fourth line every single game. Um, set the tone, set the tone. But I think the biggest difference in listening to, to Bruce Cassidy he wants more balance between his four lines, meaning he doesn't want any forwards playing over 20 minutes, and he doesn't want any forwards playing less than 10 minutes. So he wants those guys to elevate their game to the point where they're playing 12 minutes a night as a quote-unquote fourth line. What that does then, you have to chip in with goals. It's not just about energy and taking time off the clock. That's the biggest change I see from Bruce Cassidy. The only way you can keep your top guys' minutes down is if those guys on the bottom of the roster are elevating their game. Yeah, he said it's imperative. Yeah. And the pressure's on the bottom six to make sure that Correct. everything, although it's more of a top nine uh, with the, the Vegas Golden right. Knights. I uh, love to see those guys. Uh, wish they were calling tonight's game, Gosher and Natty, but uh, again, we'll see them on Thursday. And from the award-winning, Emmy-winning broadcast booth in Gosher and Natty, we've got a special treat for you. Uh, there's a campaign that uh, you know about, the dawn uh, of the Golden Age, and we've got a commercial campaign yep. that is underway with commercial number one featuring three originals the owner and two great players so when the boys got back into town i had the idea to ride along with some of them to practice just to catch up tag you're it double stamp triple stamp or double stamp you're it you, you can't tell them you can't triple stamp double stamp oh, 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 oh. hey bill you want to hear the most annoying sound in the world So maybe that wasn't my best idea. Universal Solar Direct. Payless for your electric. Look at all these bills. We've got to find a way to save money somewhere. Universal.
Universal Solar. Let's go solar. Call the Universal Solar Direct now to go on a power play with our exclusive offer. Zero down, zero payment for five months, and zero interest for nine years. Invest today, save for a lifetime. Universal Solar. Proud sponsor of the Vegas Golden Knights. Call 702-483-6900. Miss Chat, it's awesome to see everybody back into the fold and so excited. Jason watching in Alberta, that's great. Uh, Marsha So's acting is incredible. Will was great too, but Marsha delivered it like he, he's an actual trained actor. Well, yeah, maybe he wasn't acting at all. Maybe William Carlson was the only one acting because it's more, <laughs> outside, more outside his character and his nature. Uh, it was so much fun with Bill uh Foley, what a good sport uh, he William is. William Carlson, yeah, and uh, Jonathan Marshall. So, and there's going to be other uh, commercials throughout the year that really tap in and uh, take advantage of the culture and the team uh, that, that we get to work with on a daily basis within this organization that we love so much. Uh, questions coming in uh, through Twitter, Twitch, Facebook, YouTube. Uh, keep them coming. We'll get to Darren Elliott in just a little bit. But goaltending is such a huge storyline and it really does start tonight. Uh, training camp has been impressive. Uh, Logan Thompson has been awesome. He gets the start tonight. Mm -hmm. What have you seen from Thompson and Aiden Hill? Well, from Logan Thompson, he didn't do anything to, to lose the, the starting job. Um, what I mean by that is last year he did everything you possibly could as an unproven NHL entity. He comes in, goes 10, 5, and 3, played very, very well. Well enough to get into the playoffs. The guys didn't score enough for him. He did everything he could. What I saw from him, and in training camp, he's refined his technique. His feet aren't as happy anymore. He's a lot quieter in the paint. Um, he's still very explosive side to side, but he has a little more patience before he does that. And his hands have been elevated and, and out a little bit more. So technique, he's gotten better. He hasn't lost any athleticism, uh, any of those dynamics. Aiden Hill, what I saw from him, was a guy that hadn't played very much. Then all of a sudden, he gets thrust into a, a full 60-minute game, gets torched for seven. Ooh. Then he comes back and stops over 50 shots in the next start. The good news was he got to start right away. That was good on the coaching staff to do that. So that also showed me something that you can bounce back that quickly, have that kind of resolve and belief in your game. Both young guys, are, I'm hoping, and I think this is how it's going to play out, they're going to push each other to new heights for both of them. Should not uh, forget about Lauren Brassois, no, no, who's not going at all. to be back in the mix uh, in a little bit here, coming back from off-season surgery. What's the biggest challenge to the three goaltenders? Is it the first time that they face adversity, or is it just the day-to-day -day grind of playing in the National Hockey League as a number one or a guy that's playing regularly? Well, th there won't be a number one. That's the hardest part. When, you're, when there's a definitive number one, everyone knows their roles a little bit better, and it's easier. Um, when there's three guys eventually in the mix, um, there's no such thing as goaltending by committee. Um, no one can share it. You have to have somebody that takes the job and, and makes the most of it. Um, yeah, you can kind of ham and egg it with one or two guys. Three guys is, is tough. So it, it's going to be a little bit of a, I think, a, a little bit of a reach in terms of getting your work in and staying focused when it's your turn, when your number's called to play a game. Because that's going to be a balancing act. Uh dealing with the ups and downs of a season at this level with all the attention on you? Yeah, and, and nobody really cares about that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> it just sounds like excuses to fans and everybody else, but it's real. Um, but but some of the things that are going to have to, that you're going to have to deal with that's a little bit unique is the fact that you have two or three guys all vying for the same spot. Nobody is the definitive number one. Questions uh, yes. coming in uh, from all of our platforms. Uh, from Eric on Twitter. Gents, whom do you feel are the most dangerous LA Kings versus VGK to watch for tonight? Well, I've never heard that one before. Gents? Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, I would say uh, Andre Kopitar. Uh, I think he's, you know, he's, he's the captain. He's the guy that uh, leads. It's a, their home opener. Um, and then the little defenseman, Sean Jersey. He, mm -hmm. uh, I really think he's a, a dynamic player. Those would be the two that come to my mind. Fiala. Yep. Oh, the backhand right. in Seattle uh, that where he got loose in the slot was a rocket. So, yeah, that's a nice ad for them. From Prescott on Twitter, what player do you think will have a great season? This is VGK. 
Is that Prescott, Ontario, or Prescott, a guy? <laughs> okay, so anyway, uh, Prescott, I think it's going to be Shea Theodore. I talked about it at the top of the show. Um, I think Shea Theodore is going to have a top 10 D scoring season, all star all star caliber season. I think he's just not that he hasn't broken out because, like I said, he's, he's improved each and every year in terms of his point totals. I just think it's going to be a banner season. Ryan from YouTube uh, or on YouTube uh, wants to know, is Hag going to be ready for the new system uh, and with little preseason to learn it? You ask me, why don't you answer one? What do you think? I think the correspondence that he's had, huh? which was unique. Yep. Sometimes when negotiations are adversarial, there's not a lot of back and forth with the coaching staff and the player that doesn't have the contract. This was really unique. It was just let's get the contract, but everything else was was taking place. If it, it was almost like he was half in camp, so I think it's going to be a quicker learning curve than normal. Right, and I think his style lends itself really well. He likes to gallop up the ace with the puck. That's what is being promoted by the coaching staff. So I look, as I said off the top, so I look for Nick Hagit. Likewise, they have a banner season. Wyatt wants to know: Do you think Logan Thompson has any chance to win the Calder this year? Well, he's in position to. I mean, because of you know his he's name's a been mentioned player. a few times. Yeah, yeah I, I know, and and that would be something. I mean, let's let's be honest, that would be a heck of a story. Um, he's already won the uh, top goaltender of the American Hockey League. I guess it could happen. I don't see that necessarily, but wow, what a story it would be. Ron on Twitter: Will Eichel get more than one hundred points? Uh, Ninety-nine. Really? I thought you would. Go over 100 for sure. I've I've well, got him 100 plus. No, well, see the, the reason. Well, it, it, it all depends on his assist totals. He's a shooter. He still likes to score, right? I I don't see him as one of those guys that goes 40 goals and 65 assists. Well, that's mm -hmm. 105 points. So so if I don't see that, I can't see him quite cracking it. He's going to have a heck of a season. Though. And I think of him as a passer. But he told me I had more goals than assists oh, last that, year. That's what I'm saying. He pointed yeah. that out uh, to me. So. As I analyzed all of that, the big winner playing with Kessel and Eichel is Riley Smith. Absolutely, and he knows that. And like I said, because of that, he worked on different things in preseason that he would have otherwise. He wants to stay on that line, and he did everything he possibly could to do so. This has been a lot of fun. We're back at it. That's it? Okay, there's a game coming up. All right. We, we got Thursday. <laughs> That'll be fun. On the mezzanine, outside, Ashley Vice. Work the gold carpet, and then we all move inside to the pregame show on at This was our preseason. Good work. Uh, again. So we're looking forward to that. But tonight, the broadcast, we want the VGK angle, Fox Sports Las Vegas. Uh, they are rejuvenated. Uh, some skate with expectations. Others attempt to answer some questions. The game, though, is real tonight. Enjoy the broadcast with our friends at ESPN. We will see you on Thursday at the Fortress, the dawn of the golden age, VGK style. Try, then I will have failed.